ChatGPT search is finally here. So this is one of the features that I've personally been waiting for for a very long time. And it's finally here and I'm going to be testing this out. I'm going to provide you my own takes on what I do believe search should be in terms of AI powered search and what are the things that you can do now with ChatGPT search and what are the things that you cannot do as well. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing here is that we have this new icon here, search the web, right? That's the search feature that they have now. And so there are two ways so you can use this. So you can either just prompt the model with whatever, and it will decide on its own whether to use search, or you can explicitly select web so that it searches the web by default. And you can use different models. So you can use, for instance, you can use GPT-40, and you're also able to use GPT-40 mini. But this model right here in particular is not available with the web search. So let's start off with some basic tests and then gradually jump into more advanced search tasks that I think ChatGPT should be able to do. And I'll give you my opinions as we go. So the first one here, and these are very standard search tasks. And I guess these models are going to be good at that. By the way, the model that's powering the search here is a fine-tuned GPT-40. This is something that they added as part of the announcement. And that model in particular is tuned on synthetic data generated by the O1 preview model. So I think OpenAI has a tremendous advantage there that they can leverage such a system. So let's try it and test it on a few things and let's make some observations here. So I'm going to say NBA results. And what I'm expecting here is to get search results on the NBA, especially the recent games. So this is definitely a recent game that we saw. And then you can see now this is not in the best format. I would have expected to get a scoreboard or something like that. But you will see that because this is a language model, you will have these kind of generated responses or summaries. And then you have these sources here. So if you click on that, there are these sources. Now I want to try something else. Now something I use search for a lot because I do a lot of research in these companies. Uh, do a lot of R&D is something like this. Let me go back here and then plug in and then search the web and then just search. So what's the latest news from OpenAI? You can see that it's choosing these sources. Again, it's using sources like The Verge, Business Insider, Vox. You will see these sources appear over and over again. So I'm questioning here the ranking and I'm questioning here the preference of these sources because I know OpenAI has been doing a lot of partnerships with some of these media houses. That's something that can influence the results because of course not every search is going to benefit from these type of sources. There are going to be the type of searches that would benefit more from very technical content, for instance, maybe like papers or other sources, like maybe Reddit discussions, whatever that may be, GitHub. And so this is what it presented here. So what's the latest? You can see here ChatGPT's AI search tool, which was launched today and it's news from The Verge. So that's already there. So we are getting some real-time information, which is good. And you can see all the sources down here, but they are also listed here, the citations. And I like these little tags here because I can just hover over them and get a preview where exactly this pulling information from. So that's really helpful. So let's keep going. So I'm gonna ask it now something more interesting. And I have the search here. So I'm planning a wedding event. I'm just trying an interesting scenario. I'm planning an event, a wedding event in Belize, look, looking for a place with jungle scenery and close to the city. I have a budget of 5,000. There's a lot of different things that the search needs to do, right? It needs to search for information about Belize. It needs to know about the city. It needs to find like jungle scenery and all these different things. I'm very curious. And even this budget part here, I'm very curious how it's going to perform. Now, I think this is a very advanced search. I'm not expecting to see very good results. I'm expecting that the model can find certain bits of information, but I'm very curious what it's going to do in terms of recommendations. All right, so you can see the summary here, all the different sources. I can see some of these sources. I'm very familiar with these sources. Obviously, I'm from Belize, so I can tell that it's pulling information from places here in Belize. All of these are places I know I'm familiar with. So it says planning a wedding in Belize with a jungle backdrop and proximity to urban amenities is achievable within your 5,000 budget. Here are some venues that offer such settings. So these are all the venues. And these, by the way, are Google Map links. So if you click on them, it will take you to Google Map and it'll give you more information about hotel prices and so forth. So that's what it's doing there. So these are some considerations. I think this is unnecessary based on my search, but I'm fine with that. Okay, so there's one of them here specializing in intimate destination weddings. Table Rock offers a fight night package for $5,000. So I want to actually confirm that so I can see that it's pulling it from here. Okay, so this is the website from Table Rock. 
I'm very familiar with Table Rock. You can see here a nice little picture here. So it looks like they do offer this type of service. Oh, you can see that it says US 5,000 per couple and up. So it's a five night package. It did find something that's very close to the 5,000 budget, which is absolutely great. And you know, from here I can then go and try to search for more relevant information. Maybe I can do a follow up. Let me try to ask for something similar here. So. I do tend to go to New Europe every year, so I'm interested in planning a trip for New Europe 2024. And this is a conference. Please provide me flight options and then provide prices options as well. So let me see. All this information from New Europe. I can see the main website of New Europe here linked. So that's great to see as a source. Yeah, so these are the trips. They go for like $400 wrong trip. And there's no direct flight from Belize to Vancouver, from what I can tell. So New Europe's 2024 is in New Orleans. So I actually want to go and confirm that. So you can see here, New Europe's will be held in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, so these are the results. And the results don't look so great because it should be Vancouver instead of New Orleans. I went and verified that. So this is not so great. And even all of this will be biased towards that now and it's incorrect. So that's not good because I think what it did is just went to the main page, couldn't find the exact country, saw something there, like the Vancouver Convention Center or something like that, but it couldn't tell the exact location. I think this is a huge fail from the system. But as I was mentioning, this is something you should expect from these type of solutions. And so do keep this in mind when you use this search AI power search solutions. Something I want to use these AI power search solutions for is for like searching for documentation and helping me to write code about certain things because it can be very fast to do these things. And solutions today like Cursor or any of these IDEs that power search, their web search functionality is not so great. So I do tend to go back to the internet, search for something, or just use something like cloud or even ChatGPT to search for more information. So search is a really a huge part, I think, even for these IDEs. So I want to test this really quickly here to see if it works. So I'm going to ask it generate a valid code example for using O1 preview in an agentic setting. So I want to see if it can find some example about this and then generate a code example. So I'm expecting that it can go and search in the cookbook or documentation the official documentation, or even find information across the web. So notice that when I searched, I did not enable web search, and then it just rendered something here. And typically, these code snippets that are generated are not valid code in my experience. So definitely, I want to use search. I'm going to put this again here, then just search. All right, so it's searching the web now. All right, that looks good. That looks good as well. Okay, so it's using the O1 preview and I can see that's the right model name there. And then it says validate medical data. So it's doing something interesting here. That's the use case. I wonder if it's pulling this use case from some place or some source. That could be interesting. But I can see here it's referencing the OpenAI cookbook, which is good to see. But there are other search results as well that it's leveraging. I'm not sure how it's leveraging these results. I think this is a part that I would like to see more improvement on. In fact, this is something that I'm personally working on. Like when you search for information and you see the sources, how are you using the sources? Like you should be able to see exactly where you got this particular use case from or if the LLM just generated it itself. I'm okay if it generated itself, but I need to know that because I want to confirm that. So that's something that I think should be improved. You can see that it definitely leveraged the cookbook, which is good to see. Then it says for more detailed examples, refer to this guide. In terms of where it's valid, that's something that I need to test. But I think it has potential. I'm just not sure how it's using these different sources. That's the thing that is very confusing for me. I'm going to ask it for a specific news about a specific topic. I'm going to search what's the latest on AI agentic workflows. That's something that I typically do in search engines. I'll just go and type stuff and read news. And this is how I keep up to date with most of these topics that I'm interested in. Wow, I can see that it's pulling from archive paper. That's unexpected, but that's great because I'm a researcher and I do use archive a lot, as some of you may know. And obviously I know this one as well. I'm not sure about these other sources. This is the intent, right? The intent is to search for very technical information. And that's Typically where you would find the latest on these advanced AI topics. That's good to see. Again, you get a summary of it here, and then you get the little snippets here of the sources. 
and some implications. And this is new. I haven't seen this before, but it does have these cards. And I guess these are companies that they're partnering with. I'm not too sure. I need to confirm that. You can see that it says eight days ago, 39 days ago. It has a little date information, which is also very useful. And in case you want to learn more about how other companies are using it and why people are excited about agentic workflows. Like having control over the sources that the system is using rather than the system just using whatever source it wants. Like you have a preferred list of sources. I think that's pretty powerful in terms of personalized experience that you're getting from ChatGPT, but I'm not sure if the system can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test it. And the first thing I'm going to test is I'm going to just use a very generic search here. So this one says, can you search for the papers from my newsletter? This is my newsletter here. This is a series that I'm run on as part of this newsletter on Substack and generate the markdown table of it here. So this is something that I can do really well with Notebook LM as long as I provided the link. Now I want to know if ChatGPT can do this and if we can actually look for that newsletter. All right, so it says LMP newsletter. That's definitely the wrong newsletter. So that's completely wrong here. And I don't know what this table is about. That's just hallucinated. It even says here the above table is a fictional representation for illustrative purposes. That's not great. I'm actually going to do a different search here. I'm going to provide it the link to the newsletter and see if that actually helps. Can you please generate a marathon table for the 10 paper summaries found in this link? So I'm actually giving it the link. And that's kind of the source here. I wish it could have found the source itself, but it wasn't able to do that correctly. Now I'm looking at this here and okay, I can see that there are usually 10 papers. And for some reason, the last item here is completely different. And this is completely made up. Oh, so I actually got this from there was a little ad about my new newsletter in that specific edition of the newsletter. So I can show you here very quickly what I mean. So here is the newsletter. You can see all the different papers. There are 10 papers here. So what I did, it completely ignored this one. It's adding this part here, but it should be able to make sense out of this information. It should be able to know that this is, you know, an editor message is even very clear there. And this is like a little ad that I added here. And that's not part of the list of papers. And in my prompt, I asked it specifically for the list of papers. So that's just telling you, right? Like, yeah, it can pull information from the web, but the model is struggling a lot with what to do with that information. And in some cases, not understanding the context or the intent of what I'm asking it to do. So I think that's kind of where the future of search is going. Let it be more personalized. Let the model understand better the intent that you have so that those search results are more personalized and you're not just getting 10 blue links or you know, you're getting some random summarizations or generic summarizations, which is just not a good experience. So overall, that's something that will need to be improved. Overall, it was interesting because it did generate the markdown table. That's going to be super useful for me because I, then I can just copy this and do whatever I want with it. So that's why I was searching for this. Now I want to search for something very simple here. I use Hacker News a lot and I'm not expecting that this search feature knows how to do this, but I use Hacker News and I would love to filter just the AI news and get summaries of that. I mean, if I can do this with ChatGPT, I'll be using this literally every day. So I'm very curious what it does for this. And then I'm telling it also consider the current date. I don't want any old Hacker News posts. I want the current ones. So that's the context that I'm providing it. Okay, so it says, ask, what do you use ChatGPT Cloud for? Okay, so it's on Hacker News. Well, this is something that I kind of expected, which it's going to use these old sources. You can see here the 23rd of October, 23rd of October. And this begs the question of whether they are indexing this information and they're just leveraging the information here, or if they are combining this index information and maybe some real-time information and if it's favoring either and how it's actually making sense out of all these type of information that it has access to when I do this type of search. So we don't know a lot of details about that, but I can imagine that it probably has some index information already or probably using a combination of like search tools and different things like that. And so that's why I saw this. And this is very common to see with a lot of these search solutions, it from perplexity all the way to other type of searches. And I think, you know, this is not an easy problem to solve because like, how do you actually keep track of these like most recent types of information? I gave it the context that I wanted for the latest AI news, but latest is not 23rd. It's going to be the 31st of October. So that needs to be improved. And I'm seeing this across the board with all the search solutions. So I wasn't too surprised to see this. I do understand if some of these searches might not make sense for a lot of people. However, I would love for you to comment below because I'm doing a follow-up to this. And I'm also going to do a video where I compare this ChatGPT search with things like Google 
overview and also perplexity and other search solutions out there. So that's something that I'm working on. It's taking a little bit of time. Thank you so much for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll see you all in the next one.